day guys this is Dindo from uh, Fishing Seaman I hope you're having a good time as you may all know that I haven't posted any videos uh, for a while now in my YouTube channel uh, that is because I haven't jigged for a while the last one I had jigging session was in Bel Air and that was last July so uh, it was actually a wonderful session I had a wonderful time I had a total of two days jigging but uh, sad to say I was not able to catch any monsters so I only had a small grouper and um, that's it no other strikes that uh, I was expecting but uh, I think uh, I'm gonna go back there uh, sooner or later I'm just uh, waiting for my brother-in-law so I'm gonna try to fish again in that area later on I'm gonna show you the, the some of the clips that I had in my jegging session in, in Baler and Maria Aurora in, in northern Luzon but um, before that I'm, I'm also going to show you uh, some basic steps on how do I clean my reels after a jigging session and also I would like to share to you some uh, tips at the moment I am in Manila and I'm kind of stuck here I'm with my wife so uh, it's not easy to be here because jigging spots are way too far from the city from Quezon City actually so I'm not able to <clears throat> fish to jig only when when we go to my wife's province uh, my in-laws uh, which is uh, in Maria Aurora or Balero so that's the only place where I can jig from here uh, and I think we're not coming back to Cebu yet maybe next year I'm not sure but anyway, at the moment, I am, despite of being here in Manila, I have managed to bring some of my stuff, some of my, some of my gear, especially my, my jigging setups. So I have my, my jigging rod, and I have two casting rods here, uh, UL and uh, ML. And uh, I also have my two jigging reels here my, my Shimano Stella and my Osea jigger so I had this PMS with Cebu Tackle Shop and they did a great job with this one it's perfect it's ready for a battle but I don't know when so so far I have no rug for my Stella but my brother-in-law is coming from Cebu so I might have to ask him to bring it for me that pretty much it so cleaning your reels is very important because no matter how good angler you are uh, as an angler I mean it is very important that we know how to take good care of our gears especially our reels it is only normal that as the owner of those reels you have to be responsible enough to maintain your reels and uh, make sure that it's always in a good condition and ready for any time that you have you're going to have a fishing uh, session okay so um all my stuffs were actually in cebu cebu city so uh, all my, my 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 setups my gears my lures my jigs but I managed to, to bring some with me. So I, I, I was able to brought my Osha Jigger and my uh, Shimano FK and my Stratic for casting, uh, UL casting. And also um, my Stella uh, 8000, the, the main setup that I use for jigging. My Osea Jigger is uh, my backup. And FK, I use this for my light jigging setup. So. I mainly have three. Um, 
All right, let's go to the cleaning uh, part. The way I do it is uh, I start with the bail arms, you know, the bail arm. The bail arm is very important because this is the only thing that holds your line when you're fighting your fish. So you have to make sure that this is sturdy and working well and stable. Because if your bail arm is falling or your bail, bail arm is not functioning, you're gonna have a problem with it. So you go first for your bail arm, you use your oil spray. Okay, you put it in, just like that. All right, uh, your bail arm is closed, you open it and look for this side here, the very tip of the contact point of your bell arm and your uh, rotor. So you spray it two to three times. And you just used to if the reels, the reel is small. If you have a bigger reel, so you can I guess use your spray three times or I mean, even after four times. But yeah, uh, just swing your bell arm several times to make sure that the oil spreads in. All right, so after that, uh, when you're satisfied, then you put your bell arm into lock position. And that's it. So I use real oil for that. Now, when do I get to use my grease uh, spray? All right, so uh, you take off your spool and all you can see there is the spool shaft. So the spool shaft, I usually use grease on that one. So you spray a little bit and a little bit inside and spin it. Smooth. And then that's it. And then you put back your spool. And then you lock to your drag back. That's it. Pretty much it. So also another thing I would like to <clears throat> reiterate to you guys that uh, aside from bail arm and the spool shaft you can also use oil into your handle knob here in this part here you can use oil in that and spin it a few times that's it I'm done and also another thing you can also use grease for your drag if you want to uh, put some things to your drag, of course you can also do that. Uh, grease, not an oil. Okay, it's not advisable to put an oil to your drag. Screw. Oof, I was able to pull off my drag. <clears throat> For your drag, use grease. Just a little bit of spray on there. That's it. And you put it back. Uh, when it comes to the inner part or the inside of my reels, I don't trust myself on it. You know, I'm not the uh, I'm not the guy to have a go on that one. But the thing is, I have this uh, couple of friends that can do it for you. Go to Cebu Tackle Shop, look for Apollo or Edriel or Jeffrey, and they can assist you with it. They will open your reels for you, they will clean it up. And if you have something wrong with your reels, like uh, the inside part, they can also assist you with that. Just go to the store, to the shop, Cebu Tackle Shop, CTS, and those guys are always ready for you. Thank you. So that's it, that's pretty much it. That's how you, you oil and you grease your reel, spinning reels. Now, as for, um, 
As for overheads, like Sia Jigger, this is also another reel that is very complicated when you do it yourself. I mean, you, you open everything and you know, you have no idea at all. You better not. If you're not sure what you're doing, bring it to CTS and have the guys done it for you. Okay? So, when it comes to my Osia Jigger, what I do usually is when I oil it up or grease it, I use grease on all the moving parts. The drag, the handle. Well, the handle I can use oil, that's not a problem with me. I always do that ever since. Okay. And flip it several times. Move it several times. And I use grease for the drag. That's it. And also use grease on your release handle. Okay, that's it. A friend once told me that uh, if you want to find out when your Osea Jigger is needing a PMS, is when you're having a hard time to release this lever here. So if, if, if it's not giving you any problem when you unlocked it and locked it then that's okay but if you need, you're having a problem with it like for example if you want to unlock it and it's really hard and tight and you needed a little bit of force to do it then it's a sign that you need to have your uh, sea jigger opened and checked inside so that's it grease grease here and grease on the drag and oil on the handle and also uh, you can spray a little bit of grease on this hole here this is where you can access or you can put grease on the main uh, gear there that's it all right, and lastly, before I finish with the cleaning part, once I have done all those things, I usually spray oil on the whole body of the reel. Uh, given that you have to cover your line, so either you put the tape on your line or you put uh, uh, a rubber cover here, or how do you call that? Uh, spool cover or something and then you spray oil all over the body just lightly not 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 too much and then that's it you put it on your on your uh, rack or you either wipe it a little bit and then you can put it back on your pouch on the pouch that's it so that's pretty much it lastly um, the last thing you need to to uh, grease is the uh, this part of the reel here this is uh, where your handle gets in so uh, you have to put a grease in there just quite a little bit not too much that's it. I will going to share to you some few important tips that might help you or, or might be a big help to you guys. Here's one tip that I have to share to you. I have this one experience that I haven't uh, fished for like three months. 
And when I had the chance to get back to the sea and had and and have a jigging session, I was excited. I I did not mind about my letter line and my FG knot. I didn't mind about my FG knot as I thought that maybe it was still good. It's been just three months, so I think it will be just fine. So I fished with it. Um, it suddenly broken. So meaning the FJ not did not hold up. It suddenly broken. So meaning if you had an FG knot and it's been there for like a couple of months and you want to go back to fishing or jigging, you have to make sure that you change or retie a new FG knot. Don't use the old one. I don't know why, but based on my experience, like twice, three times, if you're using your old FG knot, there is a tendency that it doesn't hold much as it was when the first time you, you tied it. So always check your FG knot. If it's old enough, if it's like three months, four months, two months probably, I think it's time for you to retie it, change it, cut those lines and tie another new FG knot just to make sure that when you have a good strike and you have a good fish, you will not regret it because your FG knot is holding up and it's not and it's not breaking or you're able to land the fish. Uh, and secondly, another thing that you also have to consider when you're jigging is your um, drag. We all know how important drag is. We all know that without drag, it is impossible for you to to catch that fish. When I started jigging, I am uh, taught to use drag, not so tight and not so loose, because the purpose of the drag is that you tire the fish, or the fish can 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 burst, and your reel will release its line, but tension is there but not too much because your line could snap that's what I I learned from the, the past we were in Chargao and I had this big strike and the fish were, were able to pull the line down all the way to the reef and it snagged my line and I it snapped it was a good fish, it was a good strike, actually. And so, uh, team, uh, boss team from CTS, he advised me to, he advised me to change my drag, tighten it. So, as for him, he said, you need to tighten the drag so the fish cannot go, or so the fish were going to have a hard time to drag your line all the way to the bottom. That's to avoid snagging or reefing your line and it will end up to snap. And I realized that, okay, yeah, I think it makes sense. So I tried that and boy, it's working. So thank you, Boston. That was a good tip that you've shared to me. And now I'm using that one. Don't, don't be scared of, of uh, tighten your your drag uh, just make sure though that it's not too tight that your line will not going to uh, give any slack when the fish drags out so you always have to make sure that you are on the set you set your drag on between the very tight and tight so I don't know how to explain that. So let's just say, for example, I'm gonna show you. Uh, I have my OC jigger here. Uh, I'm not sure if 
how tight is this because I haven't checked but uh, let's see that's too tight oops sorry all right uh, just think of it that the fish will still be able to pull down but it's gonna have a hard time the only purpose for that is for the fish not to be able to to easily drag your line down and snag that on the bottom or snag it or reef it or something like that so I think that's it I don't know I don't know how to further explain it to you guys but set your drag tight set it tight not so tight but tight 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 okay all right so um okay the next thing um your jigging lures okay your jigs uh when you're going home from the jigging session always remember to wash or flush your jigs with fresh water tap water will do before keeping them back to their containers or boxes because I have uh, my, my brother and I uh, had jig one time in somewhere and he forgot to wash his jigs he discovered it from the box after almost a year and he said that everything is so messed up, you know, the hooks, his uh, split rings, and swivels are all rusted. It's all rusted. So he said he forgot to wash it after our last session, jigging session. So that's it. I think it is something uh, to share for everyone. So. You would know that uh, it's very important to wash your jigs, not just our reels, our rods, but also our jigging lures. And I think everyone is familiar with those famous jigs that we used during jigging. We have this Hugo jig, uh, 200 grams, 250, 300. Hugo is so famous. GC, uh, that's that's under good catch, yes, Hugo. And of course, we have the we have the um, Ivana, Ivana jig, and so much more. Corral, Corral. I first know I used Corral, and uh, lately I discovered Gumuku, and also one of the best jigging lures. Okay, for me personally, I prefer to use Hugo when when I'm going for a jig but it's also I am dependent on the condition of the weather let's say it's a sunny day you know sun's up and not not so much cloud in, in the sky I go for silver so I'm into silver silver hugo silver ivana silver kurao um, it's always it always worked most of the time Solver, especially when you are on a GT spot, you know, um, 60, 70, 90 meters, it's working uh, perfectly. Silver or blue pink, also, uh, it's another, another one that, that works a lot. And if it's kind of gloomy, you know, uh, when, when weather is when the day is full of clouds and the sun is not showing up you can still use silver actually it's really it's really not a problem but uh, you just have to make sure that you are in a shallower uh, spot like a GP spot it, it would it would still work and but if you are going to do the deeper part or the deeper spot uh, you always go for blue pink blue pink and then use a blinker Blinker, and that also works most of the time. 
Um, what else? Uh, th those are the only things that I can share, to be honest. Uh, you can also use blinkers whenever you want, you know. Everyone can use blinkers any time of the day, uh, especially when you're when you are fishing in, in uh, quite deep waters. So if you're targeting uh, dug to tuna, you can go for a blinker and a blue pink hugot or a blue pink Ivana or a blue pink um, pet malu. So. 300 grams, yeah. I usually go for 300 grams when I am at around 200 meters. Yeah, that's always 300 or maybe even uh, heavier than that. But oh, 300 is kind of enough for me. But if I am at around 90 meters, I always go for 200. I don't use 150 anymore. I Let's say my... my my smallest jig used, my smallest jig that I use these days is 180 grams, and that's Corral. And then 180, and then I go to 200, 270, uh, Claro, GC Claro. And I also go to 250, but I usually go for her good jigs, 200 flat. That's my most um, productive jigging lure. So uh, imagine, I remember my last dug to tuna. That's my first one actually in the jigging. That was so good, uh, 200 grams, blue pink, with a blinker on the top, the head side of the jig. And uh, to be honest, I was not even uh, jerking them. You know, I jerked for just a couple of cranks, but then I stopped because I talked to the guys. I talked to my colleagues, CTS family, and then I just felt that something grabbed it, grabbed my lure, grabbed my jig, and so I made like two hook sets, and the fish was on. Just always remember, guys, that when you're jigging, it is very important to be uh, consistent. What I mean by that, just don't feel hopeless or don't get disappointed when fish are not biting because we don't really know when the fish would, would bite. As long as you know that you're on a good spot or or you had that spot before and you had a lot of strikes, if you're back on that spot and you know that there are fish in there, just keep dropping your lure. Jerk it as much as you can and never give up. If you are in the, if you are on a stage that you're too tired and you're almost you're so tired and can't keep up anymore then take a break take a break for a couple of minutes maybe an hour you can lie down or you can take a nap and get back on it and that's uh, that's that's how the game is you have to keep on it keep jerking keep jigging keep your lure keep your jig moving down there because that's how you're going to catch a fish if you're not doing anything with your jig, I doubt it that fish will bite. Maybe, maybe a lock or maybe some kind of uh, a fluke where you will get a fish. But yes, keep it moving. Keep your lure moving all the time. Uh, jerking. I'm a fast uh, jigger, but not so fast. I don't jig so fast, like very fast. Just a simple jerking. One, two, one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Lift, down. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Lift, down. Release, drop that. 
just like that. I actually also tried my, I, I also tried slow jerks, and it's also working fine. The only thing is that maybe because I'm not a, an experienced slow jigger, I had few strikes with slow jigging, but I didn't felt or I didn't I, did, I didn't feel I didn't feel the strike. I don't know why. Maybe the strike is on, or maybe the strike was during dropping of the lure. You, imagine when you're doing slow jigging, you lift your rod, and you suddenly dropped it, and so the lure dropped. Maybe the, that that's the time the fish strikes, and you won't feel because you're dropping and slacking the line. I'm not really sure. Maybe that's just just on my own. Opinion, but I want to learn how to slow jig. Maybe one day. I have my my slow jigging gears, but I will. I haven't focused on it. So that's it, guys. Um, never give up. Choose a good jigging collar. Make sure all your knots are properly tied. FJ knot, your AG knot, it's also properly tied. Always use lighter to burn the end, tag end of your leader line. That's a um, standard procedure. Um, what else? That's it, I guess. If you have more questions, if you have something to ask me, um, just, just send me a message. You can you can message us on our Facebook page, the Fishing Seaman. Uh, I will try my best to to give you the best answer. Uh, and and you can also comment on my videos on YouTube. Uh, yes, guys, please uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, I know I haven't much of a subscribers yet, but. It would really help if you can you can add to it and be part of my channel thank you guys so I would say I would like to thank my my subscribers on YouTube for for their undying support and uh, also I would like to thank my CTS family thank you so much and uh, um, I would see you again in our next uh, next fishing adventure Thanks, guys. Oh, 
Dua pun dah. Kalau dok ke? Kalau betul ni. Kalau tak. Abu-abu Ya, abu-abu semua Guys, it's a Brown group Thank you, thank you Ganyan na lang dyan, at least Mahuli na tayo, dito tayo zero Pigilan na ito, pigilan ng 